Okay, in tonight's show we discuss how Ireland get defeated by the Japanese 100 hand slap a la Street Fighter 2. Hello, Hogan. Hope that did the right. Did Keith Earl save Ireland's World Cup chances? Or did Ireland's World Cup chances save Keith Earls? Is Aladdin Disney's greatest ever character? And we get Fla on the phone, he's out for dinner with his missus, but we interrupt that to discuss whether Owen Redden is the biggest nerd he's ever met. Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello, and you are gathered here today on the Barry Murphy and Andrew Trimble residents of rugby to celebrate the life of Irish rugby <laughs> here on Joe together with Guinness. We had a, we had a good innings. <laughs> But alas, the Japanese beat us. It was like, did you ever be playing a maid yours in Street Fighter 2? And he, he doesn't have Street Fighter 2. He doesn't have a, a Super Nintendo. He has, he's really good at like Sonic. He's a, he's a Sega. And you play Street Fighter 2. And you, you think you're just going to bait him handy. like Because even though he knows how to play, he's not good enough to beat you. But then he just picks a Honda and he just keeps lashing you in the face with that fast hand. <laughs> the hundred hand slap. <laughs> and you're like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> stop it, me. And then, or he picks um, Blanca and just goes. Zzz, zzz. Uh, I was thinking Blanca is more like uh, Argentina, quite bitey and electrocuty. Yeah. But de definitely. Chung Li, Chung Li is Japanese. So like, so, when we, so then after sixty minutes, you bring, you bring on Carberry, but then he. <laughs> They bring on Chung Lee and she just starts kicking you. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it kind of felt like to me. I also thought like Ken would be a good Owen Farrell, so I think he's was he the white white suit? Ken and Ryu. Ryu was Ryu is uh, Ryu was white. Fef de Clerk. Oh no, Ryu was the blondie lad, was he? Yeah, what I think Ryu was the white. red lad, yeah, the blonde Ken hair. Oh, red, yeah. Okay, so he's Fef de Clerk. Yeah. The white the white suit is yeah. is uh um uh, but you, you learn the special moves. Guile is the is a uh, uh, he's the military John Quill for he's so like him. You get a two of them their faces up. They look really alike, and he didn't he do a little finishing move on Owen Farrell the day. <laughs> red, yeah, red card. What was it? What was Guile's special move? Was it like I'll take that dog? Oh, that. he would um do like tiger a tiger uppercut. Like a <laughs> tiger uppercut. No, that's Ryan Ken, wasn't it? Oh, he used to do oh. scissors kick. Yeah, scissors kick upside down. Just do like a helicopter. Mm. Good finish. That's that's that was that should be his finishing move. No, finishing. It's a different game. Uh, I also thought this is very clever. Vega, do you remember that weird guy? No, I don't remember. Him. Vega was about the mask. He'd be up on the just hanging on the fence. I don't remember him. He's like the uh, IRB. They're just always up on the fence, just being weird. <laughs> just this this World Cup, they've been quite weird, saying weird yes, things. Yes. Yeah. Like get down off the fence, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Take off the mask. And they're like, well, yeah, you can. You can have foreign players in your team, but I wouldn't do it if it was me. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of shit. Um, they came up with something weird. They were slagging the referees the other day. That yeah. was quite weird as well, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was refreshing, though. They're quite vague, and his name is Vega. It's like... <laughs> it's perfect. It's very, it's very, it's many levels. Um, <clears throat> this is the order of the day, I think, is to distract people from what happened. Yeah. Because uh, it was, it was hard to watch, wasn't it? What was hard to watch? The match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a good job. <laughs> so we're going to get Fla on the phone. Fla's not here. It wasn't He's, hard to watch. He said it I was... Did. Yeah, it was... I honestly think I wasn't a million miles away from becoming a Japanese supporter. Halfway through it. Pat is going to have a heart attack over like, there. These man. guys are <laughs> class. <laughs> Why have we been supporting Ireland? When we can be supporting Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> I know the feel. I know what you're saying. It was one of those like, where were you in your life moments when Ireland beat <laughs> Ireland were beaten by Japan, like yeah. like when Princess Di died, or when 9/11 happened, or when USA '94 when we beat I Italy. This was one of those moments. Yeah, I was in Dubai, and I just got in, obviously, and I had missed my flight, so I was uh, running around the airport trying to watch. I'm really good at missing flights. Have you have you got a, a track record of missing flights? Yeah. Terrible track record. Really? Like some people have um, talents, like I think we double jointed or um, or could like 
bilingual or something like Can that. Can their tongues. Yeah, I'm really good at missing flights. Now, in my defence, Emirates Airlines were absolute ass wipes and they wouldn't uh, allow me big bring excess luggage on because I had a lot of equipment and they were trying to charge me 500 quid. But anyway, long story short, I didn't, rock and roll see, I didn't see f- oh, the whole game, so I need you to talk me through it and we're going to get Fla on the phone and uh, Pat has been working uh, all day on <laughs> trying to make sense of the whole thing as well. Um, you watched it with... I watched it uh, with the second captain's. Crack. I watched it with Owen Redden. Uh, I I I felt myself getting a little bit uptight, but then whenever I changed over, then started supporting Japan, then I, I felt like the game was a lot easier to take. Okay, it was more fun <laughs> when you were supporting Japan. It's interesting when you watch a game from the other team's perspective. When uh-huh. you're, yeah, I know uh, but Red, Redzer, I thought he was kind of getting angry. <laughs> he was getting frustrated. <laughs> yeah, he's. He, he takes his rugby seriously. Yeah. Right, sir. Yeah. We're such rugby supporters, though, that we... Um, me, I'm speaking for myself, maybe. You don't want to be... I'm with you. ...involved in this, but... He's just an Ireland rugby supporter. We're purest rugby supporters. Mm. We're supporting the greater good, the good of the game. We just want to be entertained. We, we, yeah, <laughs> we'll have a bit of crack. I just don't want to be on the losing team. Um, so I was in Dubai for a few days. Uh, great crack. Two gigs, 48 hours. Um... Dubai is such a weird place. It's like there's it's 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 where all the the influencers go, or it's all the the boyfriends of Instagram. That's where they all dwell. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think that's my observation. I I was at the bar on Thursday night, and this I met this guy from Liverpool. I just said I just started chatting to him, and uh, I asked him what he did, and he said influenza, and I was like, you have influenza. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm an influencer. I was like, what the hell is that like? He literally just gets paid to go around and taking videos of himself on Instagram and has like yeah. 100,000 followers and that kind of crack. And then... I, I love the idea. I always imagined being there when the photos are being taken because the reality of what's going on is not what is being portrayed in the video or in the yeah. photo. It's so, it's so different. And I imagine it's the 20th photo that that person yeah. is eventually I, there's this Japanese with. couple at the pool and they were like there for an hour he was just taking photographs of her and they, they couldn't get it right in front of <laughs> everyone so when you're at a pool they're, they're shameless just, they're just sitting I was just having I was sit just looking at this going and everyone is just looking yeah. I walked in on a like an influencer gathering one day in a coffee shop in Belfast there a few weeks ago and it's like clones <laughs> clones Okay. Like uh, they're all, they all look exactly the same. And I walked in, and the guy working the coffee shop was like rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I went, "What's going on here?" He goes, "Don't even talk to me." Yeah, He's like, "I've never is. seen so many handbags in my life." <laughs> <laughs> it is, and so you don't see it very often, especially not in Limerick. But when you're dropped into the middle of it in Dubai, it's like you. I felt like an alien who just landed on the planet, and yeah. I was like, "What is going on here? Who are all these people?" And did you get influenced? I was trying to see where I am on the scale. Who uh, who am I? Am I the influenced? Am I under the influence? Am I influenced? Influenza, yeah, <laughs> influenza, influenza. It's like the gender pronouns, you know. It's like, <laughs> know which, or the Mo Canelo. What were they? What were they, Pat? Were they some sort of tenses in in Irish? So, like th- gwyn, is that, gwyn, is that a motive gwyn, or gwyn. something? Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Mo Canelo was just like, if you got, if you did honor as Irish, you got taught about them, and it was a world you didn't even want to know about. It was just like the fifth tense half removed or something that's, or that's possessive what the influencers or, are to, influencers are to yeah. me weirdos um <clears throat> also met a lot of our penguins out there uh-huh. legends yeah uh loving it and one of them suggested that we do a live show from mcgettigan's in dubai tell him yes so I got straight. We were staying in the Mgettigans. That's we, where we'll we'll sort out the finer details. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell him yes. Yes, straight up. <laughs> I met a, a penguin today in Grafton Street, and it was like an hour after the game, and he goes, "Here, good luck making sense of that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the so this guy put the wheels in motion straight away. So it looks like uh, maybe around Six Nations. Yeah, got to Dubai for a few days, um, and yeah, just. Have a little holiday. Yeah. See it's now confident we are and then we're going to get bullied out of it. Yeah. Completely. The powers that be. I actually, I forgot to ask you, um, did we get, I, I, when I when I was talking to them, I, one of them said something about living on a prayer was uh, 
what Japan Japan were. That's what put it in my head for the the Facebook message I put out, mm. which was if you were to give each country a song title oh, yeah. for their World Cup hopes, what it would it be? And that was his one, was Living on a Prayer for, for Japan. But Jesus, the yes. prayers come through sometimes, don't they? Yeah. Do you got a, we got a good reaction to that, actually. Yeah, can I, have you got a few of them? Yeah, I'll see if I can come from here now. Remember, I was saying to you, my one was, the Scottish one was, remember Delamitri had Don't Come Home Too Soon for, it was one of their World Cups, I think they were in, like. Uh. Uh, here we go. Oh, somebody. Hit. The first one is Ireland's the Titanic team. Uh, Scotland one. over and done with by the Proclaimers. Uh, Ireland different ending by the Coronas. Uh, da, da, da. Coming home for Scotland. A lot of Scottish digs in here. Uh, Wales <laughs> living in the past by Jethro Tull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Australia Crimea River. Oh. Mike probably sent this before the game. Ireland, we are the champions. And then here's a, here's a Hermitage Green shout out. Uh, Scotland, quicksand. Hey. Mm, nice. Or Ireland now. Who and then knows? after the game, just uh, Alan Mack got on to us on the, on the group and said, it's all over now, baby blue, for Ireland. I don't know a lot of these songs you're mentioning. Totally out of the loop. Good know, work, I, Penguins, though. See, we've got no, um, have you noticed we've no um, pillows? Yeah, where are pillows? <laughs> so uh, when we were here on Thursday, you are obviously away, so I did it with uh, Emer. Stink face. Stink face. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> so that was great. Um, we came in and then Pat, was it you? Someone? Pat, yeah. Pat goes, um, you haven't seen uh, the, the yellow pillows, the yellow Joe pillows? <laughs> I was there. I <laughs> 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 <Just> remembered <laughs> last week at the live show <laughs> after we finished because there was such a buzz and such a, an excitement. Um, this lady came up, I think it was a lady came up on the stage and she goes, where do you get the pillows? And I said, take it, you'd be grand. <laughs> You gave some random lady your pillow. Yeah, one of the pillows. Oh, and then the other one, I chucked it. <laughs> <laughs> to the other end of the bar. Had someone. Someone, I, I, I didn't hit him on the head, but like, it was a decent shot, very close. And he went to throw it back, and I think it got tangled up in like that walkway up on top. So then that was the end of that. So that's still there. We're two pillows down. We'll get on to Guinness and see if they might have it. I li yeah, I like those pillows. It gives a nice little... Yeah. Bit of colour. Brighten the place up a bit. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened there. You're ridiculous, man. Um, I watched Aladdin on the flight. Right. What a film. Oh, the, the new one. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, my God. Really? They beat, they kicked the shit out of it. Yeah. They just, like, as, you know, The Lion King was so disappointing, I kind of presumed that this would be the same, but amazing. Um, brought me back to my fears, more of my fears. Oh, no. Um, when I was a kid, uh, that was in, we had a school play of Aladdin, and uh, I was like 10, and I really wanted to be Aladdin, but I couldn't. Do you currently you know when you were a, player, a rugby player, you weren't allowed to tell people you could sing or anything like that? Yeah. I knew I could sing, but I was like, fuck, yeah. I can't tell anyone. So I couldn't do it. I was like a fruit merchant or something like that in, in the background of Aladdin when we did it. And some, some girl was Aladdin. That ridiculous, like. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but I used, I used to go home and just practice myself anyway. And then... Um, my cousins came home from America a few weeks later and they were like really into Nirvana and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm into Nirvana, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretending like I had no clue what they were talking about. And uh, my brother was like, you don't like Nirvana. You, I was like, I do, I do, I do. And I remember I, went, I was downstairs getting a Pop-Tart or something like that and I went up and they were in my room and my brother pulled out uh, a little tape recorder and he just pressed play. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And it was me, just like, <laughs> I can show you the world. <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splash, <laughs> doing all Jasmine's parts and everything. I was like, fuck. <laughs> so what is this? I still get abuse over it, so I relived that oh. other fear on the plane there. But it's a great flick. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the match? Um... Defensively, we were really, really poor. Yeah. Um, but it was, I think the game was um, just won by the amount of energy that Japan brought to it. They played with such pace. They were so accurate. Uh, their phase play was so quick. They just kept the ball so fast. Their nine was unbelievable. Just kept getting there, getting the ball gone really quickly. So Ireland never got set. Mm. So they never got off the line. They never made an impact. They never slowed them down. And Japan just got their tails up. 
Um, and then as a result, I think because Ireland were kind of on the, on the receiving end more often than not, apart from the first 20 minutes, mm. then when Ireland got the ball, then they looked exhausted. Yeah. They looked so tired, flat, and just looked like um, Japan just kind of broke their spirit or just... Like, towards the end. Have, was, the humidity must have been unbelievable. And yeah. Pace was pretty high. The atmosphere was pretty draining, I'd say. Yeah. Um, Pat, like you, you gave, on your article on Joe today, you gave the rate, player ratings not mm. too bad. And I think that was a fair reflection of like, it's not like they played terribly. What did you give Ring Rose and Farrell? I gave Ring Rose seven and a half. And I gave Farrell an eight out of ten. Yeah, those two were brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, they were. So like, uh, they, they were the best. And yeah, and I said, I was saying, saying to Barry there that like, I got an email from somebody saying, this is shit. Like the ratings are far too generous. Like there's a lot of fives and sixes. He's like, that means you're saying that nobody was like really poor. They're all, and I was just, and I was got back to him and I said, yeah, I just thought a lot of them were average or just yeah. good, but like not great. And Japan were great, and that's why we got beaten. It's not that anybody was really poor, but we were just average today. Like, yeah, we but, were good. Uh, we were good for twenty minutes. We were really good. 21 for Twenty-one minutes. minutes. Yeah, it was great. Mm. And I wonder if so. We were what twelve three up. Yeah. I wonder if we'd scored one more time. If it could have been mm. a very different game, if yeah. we could have broke them a bit. Although, I, can, I don't think Japan would have gone out the gate. They had so much support mm. and they were so up for it. Mm. And they, they kind of, I, I think, I think they would have been pro- probably more resilient than than Ireland were. Yeah. Actually, when Japan got back into it, planted the seed of doubt, and then Ireland just got within themselves. They got narrower, and they got panicky, and they like, like towards the end, the face play they're putting together. James Ryan took the ball maybe touched the ball maybe six or seven times and like linked a couple of times carried a couple of times he looked knackered yeah everybody was, looked knackered everybody yeah. was t- catching the ball standing still yeah japan were herring up mm-hmm. smashing boys mm-hmm. it was i mean i think ireland the the thing that we would be critical of i think is that ireland just um they didn't show any resilience they kind of they got questioned a wee bit and then japan got at them and they kind of just went into themselves and didn't. I, I think. Manage it. I think if Sexton had been there, he might have. Yeah. He might have been able to manage that a bit more, or been a bit more stubborn. Yeah. Um. I mean, the Cardi went really well. His kicking game was class early on. Yeah. Yeah. For everybody thought like for the first 20, 25 minutes, everyone's like, "Holy shit, Jack Carthy is unbelievable!" Yeah. Like and it's like those great kicks, and then just when it started to turn against us. Yeah. Even when he was kicking, he wasn't finding touch as well. He was just giving them the ball back. And he was, I'm, I'm not even talking about this, mm. his, his play. I thought he, play, he played well mm. at times. Like he kicked away a couple of times, but some of his kicks were lovely, like yeah. the cross field for um, Ring, Ring Rose, Rose for, the, for the try. But it was more just the, the, the leadership that Johnny would have brought yeah. and the kind of stubbornness. That was the most demanding game he's ever played in yeah you know attritionally for you know mentally and physically yeah um so mentally i think massively yeah yeah okay will we get jerry flannery we on get the someone phone on an knows. expert who knows the <laughs> names of the players <laughs> uh flies out for dinner and pints in limerick at the moment so we've oh. ruined his evening it's saturday night by the way we're in here doing this thank you all for, for we dinner. love rugby yeah we do <laughs> we love not just irish rugby Japanese room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we're joined on the phone by Jerry Flannery. How are we doing, Fla? Konnichiwa, Fla. <laughs> uh, arigato. Konnichi, uh, Fla. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I'm uh, out for dinner. Uh, my missus, we're out in the dare. Very fancy. Yeah, it's good. Good. Okay. Has, well, has, has Baz ruined your evening? A uh, little bit, yeah, a little bit, but look, S- sorry, it happens, so sorry. not a big deal. <laughs> sorry. Um, and, and I've been trying to figure out this game anyway. You know, I, I, it's it's kind of break my head a little bit since it's since, since, since played. Yeah, we haven't been o- overly negative in the first ten minutes. Here, we're just kind of uh, uh, discussing how you know how good Japan were, as opposed to how how bad Ireland were, and, and I think we mainly said that they probably didn't manage the game as well as they should have. Uh, is that is that something around the same lines that you're thinking? Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty accurate. Um, I, I was just, from, from what I'd seen from Japan from the first round, 
and I watched him in the Nations Cup against Fiji, and I'd watched him against uh, against South Africa as well in the warm-ups. I, I did not think that they were capable of that, but they just looked so much better than us. When I watched the game back again, I watched it like in... I was kind of... I was a little bit lost when I watched the first... Like, how did we lose that game? I know this film was off. And, but Japan were good. Japan were good. Like, I was conscious that when we beat Scotland, that Scotland were poor. But... um. You know, it was, it was, uh, you know, Japan were good. There's, there's a lot of things that we could have done better, but um, there's some really big momentum swings in the game after about 20 minutes. I think, you know, when when Japan Japan won a scrum penalty, a big, big momentum swift, uh, shift. Fa, and, um, Fa, I, w- I wanted to ask you about that. The first scrum, Ireland were dominant. And I don't know, was that 10 minutes, 15, yeah. whatever, in 15 minutes later... How how can there be such a, a turnaround in the scrum? Yeah, I suppose it's like it's it's not it's not that that I'm better than this guy, so I'm always going to beat him. You've got eight guys competing against another eight guys. They've all got to be trying to line to the same point, and and not, there's not, it's not as it's going to be a huge discrepancy between them, you know. So it's like uh, an analogy is like if if you want someone who's someone who's who's going for a two hundred kg squat. And as a winner at max or something like that, you know, it, it, they're not always going to get it, but they're generally going to be there and thereabouts, as in getting there. And uh, and that's kind of how scrummaging goes. And I thought like they caught that one where they got a, almost like a, it's like Ireland were advancing too quickly on the loose head side, which left Ty Furlong then on his own with the with the Japanese uh, loose head and and Hori the hooker there, and uh, he got kind of pincered in a little bit, so they, they didn't get a decision on it. Um, a lot of people just when I was reading up on it earlier on a lot of people questioning why Ireland didn't kick the ball enough uh, were we trying a way to play a way more of an offloading game uh, where where did that come out of and would you agree that we didn't kick enough um, I think it was 19 kicks from hand from both sides and I, I, I would have thought that um, that like based on how, how how Japan had gone against Russia I thought that they didn't handle, handle the kicking game well I thought with uh, with Joseph and Brown as their head coach, as their coaches, that um, they were very much focused on shifting the ball to the edge um, as much as they could, changing the point of contact, a real high tempo game that doesn't rely on, you know, that doesn't ever allow the game to slow down to the point where now we've got to try and generate momentum here with a with a with a one off big carry because they don't really have the personnel outside of probably Maffey within their pack to do that. Now Maffey's more of an offloader. But um, I felt that uh, I, I felt that if Ireland tested them with the kicking game that they played, like pretty, that they really it came into their, it, into its own in the second half against Scotland because of the conditions. And Ireland were really, really good, like the pressure kicking from Murray, really accurate kicking, a real strong kick chase line every time. And I, I, I wasn't overly, overly um, impressed with uh, the Japanese back three in the Russian game. And uh, even though it shifted around a little bit today, I still felt that they they didn't kick accurately when when the ball was put in behind them when they were turned, or else Matsushima just made that line break um, up the left touch line. But but in general, they they it was they weren't they weren't exiting well with their kicks. So uh, it's an area that Ireland probably could have targeted a bit more. What about Vlad? Do you think um, Ireland's defence was an issue? Um, because and and in, uh, more specifically, do you think their line speed was an issue? I was sitting beside Owen Redden watching the game, and and you know he's like a bit of a nerd when it comes to defence. He's he's quite opinionated. He's a nerd. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. A nerd. He's a nerd. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. He's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've, I find myself, I agree with pretty much everything okay, he said. Yeah, he's a nerd. I, I get it. I <laughs> Uh, he thought our line speed was shocking, and then a good example. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. <laughs> He's a nerd. But uh, I, I, I would have thought from my expert analysis that um, yeah, our line speed was. I, I, I felt it was off a little bit, particularly because uh, Japan were trying to move the ball to the edge, and a lot, an awful lot of times you get someone coming up, say, um, on say their first receiver slash second receiver putting line speed pressure on him, trying to get him to pass early. But then you see the rest of the line bent back every single time. And I, what it is, it just kind of gave, it gives Japan options where they just just tip that ball on, even when it wasn't a particularly accurate pass. 
and they just made up lots of soft, soft meters on the outside. And um, to the point where I kind of got their offloaded game going, you know, I felt that, you know, I, Andy Farrow would be, be a little bit a little bit pissed off with that, but, you know, that was how it unfolded. What about uh, Gardner? Um, again, that's getting a little bit of chat. Would you have an issue with uh, any of his decisions? Um, yeah, there's a few things. That, look, I, th- I think it's it, it, it's it's not a good place to go when you're always looking for like oh if we lost the game it's the referee but there's a few things that definitely like there was, there was at one stage uh, Jack Carty is, uh, was contesting in the air for a kick um, in the second half and he got, he kind of got taken out as he was going for it and the gardener was looking right at him and didn't seem to just it, it just didn't register with him you know yeah. it was essentially almost a yellow card I think there was I'm not sure which Japanese player it was but. They went. They kind of even half contested and just took Jack out as he was trying to field the ball. But he just he just waved play on. But you look, know, it's it, it, it's hard. I would be a big fan of criticism of some of these. Mm-hmm. And I know this is but Captain Hines. Captain hindsight. So okay, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you about Japan in a, in a couple of minutes, um, but uh, Captain Hindsight uh, head on us. Schmidt's selection. What do you reckon? Like a six-day turnaround, picking pretty much the same pack that had gone through, uh, you know, it, you know, played a lot of the rugby in the warm-up games and then gone through that, that tough game against Scotland. Um, do you think he made mistakes in those selections or, or is it the fact that Japan were just excellent? Um, I, I couldn't second-guess this, the selection because I suppose... He, uh, I, I, I would take it from from who went out there that he was trying to pick his strongest side again for for the second round against Japan, because Rob Carney came back in, um, Earnsy coming back in, um, you know, because Bundyaki was out, Chris Farrell coming in, um, and then obviously with with Johnny being gone, I think if Johnny was fit, he would have started, and then would have used to kind of probably freshing it up then for Russia and, uh, and Samoa. It's, it's. I don't think it's fair to say that that he got it wrong because when when the replacements come on, I didn't see a huge change up that would that would make me think well, oh, this guy should have started definitely, you know. So it was probably it was just a flat performance all around, and you know, look, compare last week and say on on Sunday when we beat when we beat Scotland, we weren't in, we were good, but Scotland were terrible, and today. Japan were really good. Like you know, we weren't we weren't great, but Japan were, were really good. I suppose yeah, it's just just a bit of a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I agree. Um, looking ahead to to where they go from here, then is it is it? Uh, I suppose it could, it could get, be it could be fine. Yeah, <clears throat> if Scotland get, beat Japan, um, am I right in saying Pat? Stop me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but as long as there's no more no bonus points then we've still got a good chance of, of topping the pool if, yeah we'd need Scotland to beat that's what I mean if Scotland yeah, yeah. beat Japan because I mean, yeah, we beat them so heavily yeah. we would stand a good chance then of topping the pool yeah, yeah. so Earlsey and chasing back after that intercept potentially saved them mm. yeah that was unreal yeah mm. that's, that's why that's the reason why Joe loves him stuff like that mm. that, he's, yeah. that he outpaced Larmer as well like did he go past Larmer? Yeah, he went past Larmer, yeah, really? and 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 won it, and then nearly <coughs> got the turnover as well. Like, mm. could have saved you, their World Cup. Were you um, Fla or or Pat or Baz? If you saw this bit, were you cursing um, Carberry when he kicked the ball out? I was, but uh, it was since been pointed out. Yes, that, same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said no, like like as if they were definitely going to score, like if they kept the ball. But I think it's been pointed out that if he if Japan had turned them over and we would have lost the bonus point and yeah. it would have been an absolute disaster entirely. Um, I would have went for it though. Would you? Yeah. Put up a contestable. Oh, Jesus. I just... But impre- I'm, not a, I'm the only rugby player not here in the room. As well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think, Vlad? Now you were like, kick it out. No, no, put it out, put it out because uh, the, 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 the downside of actually not winning a bonus, not, not going to lose a bonus point would have, would have killed us. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, shit, man. Japan were good. Um, 
but I, I, I didn't think we'd be as flat as we were. We looked exhausted. Yeah, looked we looked so exhausted. I, and, yeah, I um, thought we looked flat. I thought we looked like we, the same way we looked at Twickenham a month ago. Yeah, but you look. That's I'm not sure if we like the the the, the way the Japanese were playing, man. Like, <clears> that <throat> they were like they were so happy for it to just be constantly shifting the ball around, constantly shifting the ball around. Yeah, I, I would have. I'm not sure what would have been the best way to do it. Like to me, probably I'm, I'm imagining like just trying to play a bit more of a pressure game, trying to be a bit more accurate with our with our kicking game, turning the Japanese, making them play out of their own half. But the more we made it a kind of a slow contest, more more set piece oriented, and because um, it's not like the Japanese got massive delivery off their set piece, they didn't. But um, I thought that we, we allowed we allowed their nine. Uh, either Nagare or, or Tanaka to really dictate the pace of the game. The turnover on fifty on fifty nine minutes um, absolutely killed us. The, uh, when 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 CJ carried into uh, into Chris Farrell, that absolutely killed us. And um, you know that, that turnover there was really really costly. But like uh, by and large, I think they really dictated how the game was being run. That looked sloppy, didn't it? It looked like. Um... Like it just looked a little bit thoughtless, and it was it's really unlike Joe. I think that was a reflection of how mm. kind of shell shocked everybody was, and they were just like, "Geez, we're yeah. back here in our 22." Yeah, look, I think I think when when stuff like this happens, I think the players have to have to take ownership on it because they're, they're the most important guys. You can do it almost everyone except for the players. You know, you can't do you can't do it without players. So they're actually the most important guys, and. Um, I think mean, they have to take a bit of ownership on this now going forward. Um, you know, I think it was it was it was it was work rate. We were we were definitely outworked. Um, we could have strategically played and give ourselves a little bit more of an advantage by making a bit more of an arm wrestle and rather uh, you know coughing the ball up so easily. But I still don't think our our our, our penalty count was 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 excessively bad. So. Um, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I have to give Japan credit. Yeah, that was one of the, one thing I was going to ask you was like, I mean, it bodes well for the competition. Japan are going to, uh, you know, the, the the support is going to get behind them a hell of a lot more, and it's it's great for rugby. Um, for us, then it's looking like New Zealand in the in the quarterfinals if we do get through. Um, and now it looks like to play against Ireland, it's it's put them under pressure and keep your discipline incredible. Um, that's what I kind of took from from what I saw of the game today. Um, New Zealand <clears throat> seemed to be getting away with murder as opposed to having great discipline. As opposed to murdering. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, what what do you expect? Uh, do you expect Ireland to change how they approach the the All Blacks game, or or uh, how do you think they'll they'll fare with the way the All Blacks are playing at the moment, kind of living in that? Chaotic uh, environment uh, and with the way they're playing. I think that the chaotic thing is that that, that came from the pressure that the uh, that the Springboks were putting on with their they were so frantic with their line speed and, and with the pressure of putting on a breakdown. And New Zealand just seemed to respond as in like the looser, you know, the, the more that they kind of got fractured, the more they got forced into unstructure from the from the Springbok pressure, the more they just kind of just tossed the ball around. Um, I don't think that's going to be a massive feature of their game going forward. I think if that was kind of dictated by the box. Um, I think Ireland have got to focus on the next two games now and to try and get a good result with like good basics um, and, and start feeling, you know, start feeling good about how the way that, that they can play before they go to a, before they even start looking ahead towards a quarter final because um, I suppose. Everyone felt brilliant after the after the game against Scotland, but now now we're kind of back to square one again. A lot, you know, a lot of the kind of that niggling feeling that was there after the, after the game against England is probably back again. So, uh, just on that, um, assuming we do make a quarter final, um, we've got three weeks until that. So, that, that that kind of feeling after the game that the boys were experiencing in the changing room. If they beat Russia on Thursday, who cares? They'll still have the feeling. If they move on and beat Samoa, they'll still have that feeling. So that this kind of feeling and the hurt, I suppose, from the defeat is going to sit with them for a few weeks now. 
I don't know if that'll be good or bad because it could be good in that it builds up, builds up, builds up and then you get this monumental performance at the end of it. Or it could be something that maybe festers uh, and you know becomes an issue after a few weeks. Have you any, any thoughts on that? Again, bear in mind, this is a nerdy discussion between me and Owen Redden. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is Owen, Owen Redden in disguise? Um, it was... Um, I don't. I don't think so, man. I. I think honestly that, like, regardless of like the, the Japanese result, if the lads are going into the Russian game and if they're, if they're, you know, they're they're looking to get a big performance, like when you go out there, it's not like you, you don't discount the opposition. If you play well, you know you played you, you played well. So um, if whatever fifteen goes out against Russia, I imagine it's going to be it's going to have a lot of changes in there, both from a kind of a, a freshness point of view and also kind of a like. A little bit of okay. Well, you didn't perform, so someone else is going to have their goal this weekend. Um, so I think that um, I, think that, I think that the players will go out and say, "This is my opportunity." And regardless if it's Russia or if it's New Zealand, if they play really, really well, they'll take as much confidence from that um, as you know. It's not going to be diluted by the fact that we'd lost to Japan uh, the previous game. So I think that they can they can do a lot towards towards uh, getting back in a good mental state from a good performance against Russia, and then against the same against Samoa, building in towards a, a quarter final. Okay, um, how's the TV going? Uh, you've got a few games uh, this week. I'm enjoying your little did, uh, your little um, digs at people. Uh, no real digs. Um, yeah. I uh, I did I did the Munster game today in Tone Park. A very good performance from Munster against Dragons. Um, Anyone stand out there for you? Anyone that we we wouldn't uh, be aware of stand out? Kevin O'Byrne, Kevin O'Byrne and Billy Holland were were excellent, but <clears> Shane Daly was man of the match. I think because his stuff was kind of a bit more X factor. It wasn't a huge amount of rugby played. Um, Munster's set piece was good. Um, but I suppose everyone was still kind of in shock going in, kind of shaking and like with blankets and cups of soup after the, <laughs> after watching the Japan game that morning. So, mm. um, but it was good to see Munster win again. So, okay, well we'll get you uh, we'll get you back up here on the couch with us very soon. We we're also talking about going to Dubai for a, a live show in March, so we're going to lock that in as well and put that in your diary. Um, but look, we'll let you back to your dinner with your pals. Thanks a million for, okay. for joining us. You watch out for the returns, okay? Take it easy. See you later, man. Cheers Take it flat. easy. See ya. Good luck. Uh, okay, that was flat. Uh, one thing I didn't, uh, we didn't discuss there is injuries and um, I suppose how the squad is looking after these couple of games. So it looks like Conan has gone home. Um, Reese Rodog to potentially come out. Um, oh, um, Jack, uh, Jordan, Jordan Murphy. Oh, did I say Reese Rodog? Sorry, Jordan Murphy to come out. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts, Pat? I know you were a bit concerned about what, like, why Peter Manley was starting, why, um, why not rest him considering the week he had, and, and then he was under a little bit of doubt. Yeah, uh, I thought it was like, like he wasn't supposed to play. Like mm -hmm. he was, he was never supposed to play. Jack Conan was supposed to play number eight, and CJ was supposed to play blindside. But then because Jack got injured in the morning, they had to put him back in. But I was saying, like, with Reese Ruddock there and with even Tyg Byrne, who can cover blindside or anywhere in the back row, why not rest Pete anyway? And mm. he was one of the players who suffered most today. He didn't look up to it. And Gardner was pretty harsh on him at the, at the breakdown as well. But He made a point early on, didn't he? He penalised mm. Pete a couple of times early on. But that, that could have been anyone, though. It just happened to be Pete. And Gardner was kind of setting a stall out early, wasn't he? He was, he was very kind of... Lads not supporting their own weight. That's what he was very harsh on. And but there was one Conor Murray got pinged with as well, and he just said to him, Re -re like release it. You're not. You haven't got your weight on it. And Murray did, and he still gave it. Like you know, the minute he said it, he did what he asked him to, and he still penalised him. But yeah, we were having a bit of an argument there <laughs> off air. But I was saying, it's funny. I would have made. I would have kept in Larmer and Conway because they'd started the tournament so well. But then mm. I would have changed more around in the pack. Like but. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a funny thing. Yeah, you could say hindsight, but I don't think O'Mahony should have been starting that game. Mm. Potentially use a bit more of. You and know. then I don't think maybe best as well. 
Considering he'd played eighty to full eighty minutes, I thought like, that was a strange one. Mm. Yeah, I really did. I think I think he'd uh, he'd done enough to prove that you know anyone that was doubting him for the for the head of the Scottish game, he'd obviously come out and had an absolute stormer, mm. and, and the lineout had gone so well. And but I suppose look, there's, they didn't want to take. They were obviously weren't taking them too lightly, the Japanese, like by by you know by putting the, all those players uh, straight back into it. But Joe would get criticism there, no matter what happens, because if he yeah. if he doesn't make any changes, then he's seemingly going full strength. Yeah, they get criticism for not making changes. And then if he'd made changes, then they would say, "Geez, they took and, Japan and lightly." Schmidt's other thing is that he always then says he's fit now, but we just didn't. So he said Sexton was fit. And then he's getting asked after the game, but if he's fit, why do you not play him against Japan? Do you don't mm. respect Japan, like so. Mm. He's gonna get nailed in every every no, which direction. Tough, yeah. Yeah. Let's nail him. <laughs> get him, boys. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mate texted me this morning. He's like, "This my weekend is ruined now." <laughs> like proper pissed off <laughs> over it. Like you know, so relax. Japan hustled us, you know. Yeah, they tricked us. They kind of did, didn't they? They they played badly last week on purpose. Yeah. Did you notice they were like winging each other not? <laughs> <laughs> and then they hustled us. Either they're hustling us or we'll, we're hustling South Africa. Ah. Uh, or this is the influencing all over and again. And then hustle, uh, uh, South Africa in turn will hustle someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you hear... Um, no basis to that theory. No. <laughs> Did you hear Luke Thompson, the, their lock, the 38-year-old lad? Did you see him walking off? Yeah. He looked like a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, limping off. And then, uh, Redden turns to me and he goes, that's who's beating Ireland today. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, yeah, he came out afterwards and said, like, oh, you know, all the Irish media were talking about South Africa, like, and they were, you know, and, you know, we were completely disrespected and we use it. And then I was kind of just like, yeah, we kind of have been talking about South Africa, like, mm. and then that was the vibe. The vibe was South Africa, South Africa. That's who we're going to be playing, and now I don't know. It could be that way, but yeah, your man was like, you think he put in nineteen tackles, didn't miss one, and wow. and yeah. then James Moore was twenty three or something, like. These two lads have never. Yeah, really it was, heard much of it was before, classic yeah. uh, us getting ahead of ourselves. We're terrorists, for it, to be fair. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll come back in part two for a stab at black and white. We've only done one part. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Flaz not here today, so uh, we're going to do black and white ourselves. So this is 60 seconds, head to head, one controversial statement and a big debate. Pat will decide who wins and whoever does gets a pint of Guinness on our black and white leaderboard. Pat, what is this week's black and white statement? Sticking to your theme from earlier on, it's Aladdin is the best Disney character. Trimby, you're... I'm against four. Okay. I'm four, because right. I definitely think he is. Okay, I'm against. Okay. Right, I'll get the clock going. Who goes first? You go first there, Barry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go. I think Aladdin is the best because uh, he's got great songs, <clears throat> uh, he's cool, he's, got, he's very good with animals, he loves the little monkey lad, he looks after him, Abu. Um, he's very good to Jasmine, he treats her like, like a, a princess, princess. <laughs> but he has a lot of respect for her as a, as a woman and as a strong, independent woman as well. He <laughs> <laughs> he's not one of, like, one of these sexist old fucking... Simba's a bit sexist, isn't he? He doesn't really give a shit half the time. He's a bit of an asshole. Yeah, he's mean, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas Aladdin, he's just... And he, okay, he's a thief, but he's like Robin Hood. He steal, steals from the, the rich and gives to the monkey. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, he, and he frees the genie at the end. He frees the genie with his last wish. What a legend. Could have asked for more. Nah, you're free, genie. Wow. Whew. I should do, we, they should always be a uh, Disney based like, kick your ass <laughs> yeah. every week I should be a good topic here <laughs> <laughs> go if on we, if, we, if we're playing top trumps <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I was Baz I'd be like oh, Disney alright <laughs> 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 Trim we give, give you just a couple of seconds to kind of compose yourself here because yeah, that was a good I one I feel like I feel like Ireland at like 20 minutes in <laughs> <laughs> right let's do it um, well, obviously, I, I completely disagree. Um, for me, um, my the, the the best Disney character of all time 
is Pumba. Um, because you know he he like he sings lots of funny songs and uh, he's a warthog, and he's an unlikely source for a hero, but to me he's the hero of the um, the famous uh, Disney movie The Lion King. Even within Aladdin, he's not even the best character in that. Jafar is better. Jasmine be is better. The, the genie, all better. No, because they're they all. But he see he's okay. But, no, go on, because <laughs> he brings them all together. It's all about him. It's his name above I the just, door. I just <laughs> <laughs> Same as us. That's yeah. why we're the best characters in this show. <laughs> yeah, no, you can have this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going with Pumba. Pumba's all you got. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I'll, I'm take I'm I'll take it. I'll take it. I did a, I did a, a, a charity day yesterday for... Um, Crumlin, the children's hospital. Yeah. But I, I got down to Glenda Lock um to and I thought I was gonna say a few words, got down there and then kinda discovered it was a, a hike and I got rubbed into doing it. Nineteen kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> Were you dressed appropriately? <laughs> By the end, I was walking like your man Thompson <laughs> coming off the pitch. <laughs> I wasn't dressed appropriately, no. I did have like a makeshift pair of hiking boots in the form of like high top vans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it made do. It was absolutely banjacked. Just, and back and just legs. walking, was it like? Just walking. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> I was so tired. It was for the kids though. It was for the kids. It was for the kids. Fair play to you. Look. Um, so I feel like that physical fatigue has made its way into the black and white performance. <laughs> okay, I need to fatigue you every week, so <laughs> I'll take it. All right, we'll have a quick roundup of the Guinness Pro 14, which started back this weekend. Uh, did you see anything oh, else? Oh, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Monster. Don't say Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Need to improve you know what? We're not even going to read their results. <laughs> Ulster. Pardon Collins because they got beat. <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> Ulster beat uh, Ospreys 38 14 at Raven Hill. Great start for them. Two Mikey tries. Laurie flying. Was he, yeah? Yeah, he came off the, oh, came off the bench, I think. Little Laurie. I think he did. Yeah. yeah. Mike Lowry. Yeah. There's a lot of people called Mike Lowry. Yeah, your man from um, Bad Boys. Hmm. That's all I got really. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely more. Uh, Craig Gilroy got a couple of tries. Uh, new boys, Sam Carter, Jack McGrath and Matt Fedez. Matt Fedez. Um, apparently went very well. Yes. That's what Pat was saying. Uh, Monster hammered the Dragons, as Flash said, 39-9 with uh, Nick McCarthy uh, getting his debut and looking good. Uh, Dave Kearney scored a hat-trick for Leinster. So they edged out Treviso 32-27. It's good to see Treviso still, you know, even with obviously half their team uh, probably depleted. Conceding hat tricks, yeah. <laughs> 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 Put 27 points in Leinster, they're still, yeah. still doing okay. Uh, a sliding doors moment for Dave Carney. He could be crying in the changing room in Japan, but he's scoring hat tricks in Treviso. Yeah, very true. Um, Scarlet's beat Connacht 18-10 at Parky Scarlet's to ensure it wasn't another green sweep. Okay, that's um I think that's it. Look, we've we've done our best to distract you, I think. Yeah, I think we've done it. But fine. we've had, we, but we've had to acknowledge it. Um tough day for Irish rugby, but look, we'll be back. We're still going to win the World Cup. Japan. Yeah. No Ireland. <laughs> or <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we're going to be the first team to ever win the World Cup by still losing a game in the World Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. That's the new plan. Okay. Uh, so, look, onwards. We and are. We're. We're Japan supporters <coughs> now. This is the Baz and Andrews dojo of rugby. Mm, we need to get back our little <laughs> Japanese flag. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, right, thanks everybody for listening and all your favourite apps and for those of you watching us on U YouTube. YouTube. Cheers to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped out making this show and for coming in late on a Saturday. We really appreciate it. Uh, to Pat, to Alan, to Dermot and to Anthony. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe together with Guinness. Party on. Party on.